This video has been sponsored by Solder Stick. More on that at the end. Hey, what's happening, guys? Today, we're going to take a quick look at this. This is in, I have no idea how old, but a pretty old Ibanez TR style bass guitar. Belongs to a friend of mine, Banana. And uh, this is like a barn find. And it did not have any potentiometers in it. So he asked me if I could wire this up for him. And I did. And that's what I want to talk to you guys about today. Is the simple wiring that goes into uh, musical instruments like guitars and basses. For instance, if you look here, you'll see this one has three knobs. These two are the volume knobs for the neck and the bridge pickups, and then it has a single tone control. And if I flip it over here and take you down here, you can get a look at the wiring. So we have the output jack right over here. That's what plugs into the amplifier comes in with this red wire. This is actually a, a coaxial wire to our tone control right here. And then we have two pickups for our volume controls there. And I'm going to show you how these things are wired and how this kind of stuff works. Okay. So here is like a basic block diagram. We have the first pickup has a ground lead and a signal. I'll mark these ground signal. We have the second pickup, which also has a ground and a signal. We have volume one for pickup one, volume two for pickup two, a tone control, a capacitor, and our output jack. Now, there's one thing in here I didn't draw, and that is the bridge. The bridge is the metal plate where all of the strings ends attached something kind of like this you know there's a place for the there's a hole here in each one you know the strings come through here and go through the holes well coming out of that is also a ground wire so that should represent everything there is no switch involved in this circuitry <clears throat> this will be uh, like a jazz bass circuit So the way this works is we're going to take the ground from the first pickup and we are going to solder it to the actual body of the potentiometer. We will do the same thing with this one. Okay. Now our hot leads... Are going to come to that middle connection there like so just like that so each pickup is connected grounded to the body of the potentiometer and the hot goes to the middle that is the wiper that is your adjustable one okay so then on this one, this outside leg here, we are also going to ground these to the body of the pickup. So now we have each one of these connected and grounded together. So we have one more. And each of these is just going to come out. I think I have any more colors. Yeah, it's going to come out like this. We're going to come off of this pin down to here to this pin. And then off of this pin, we're going to come down here to the center pin of our tone control. This one here is not going to be connected. So you see we have the signal coming from the pickup, either one, and then it travels down to the tone control. Now, from the tone control, 
we have this capacitor. And this is where we're going to get into all of the mathematics and the subjective, what does it sound like to you? But basically what we're going to do is we are going to solder one side of the capacitor, just like that, to the potentiometer. And one side is going to get soldered to this leg here. And finally, our signal is going to come out of the center leg. Remember, we followed the signal from the pickups, through the volumes, through the tone. And it's going to come right down there to the signal lead off of the uh, output jack. Now, we're also left with this ground here. You just solder it up there to that pot just like that. It's important that's there. You'll get a lot of hum if not. So, what are we doing? Why does this work? How does this work? Well, basically all we're doing for volume controls is we're determining a proportion of the signal to be sent to ground. That's it. We're sending some of the signal to ground. We're letting a little bit come through. That's what your volume knobs do. Now, with your tone knob, it becomes a little bit more interesting. So, all right, let me label these. Volume neck. Volume bridge. And tone, we'll call it overall. So what value of capacitor do you put in there? That becomes an important question. Well, let's talk about what that capacitor does, and we'll be able to better answer that question. But just to start things out kind of simply, the most common you're going to find are 0.22 microfarad and 0.47 microfarad. And you may be asking yourself, why? Well, because the value of this, and we can find that frequency, it is, uh, the capacitive frequency is equal to 1 over 2 pi RC. Well, now we look here and say, what? RC? RC, yes, RC. You're going to find RC just about everywhere in electronics. So what we're doing here is we are actually creating a little low pass filter. All right. So let's zoom in here on that a little bit. So our AC signal from the vibrating strings comes in here and it gets all of its, you know, volume stuff done before it gets to here. Now, when we reach the tone potentiometer, remember the potentiometer is simply a variable resistor. So we have our signal going through a resistor and then some of it is being bled off to ground through this capacitor according to this formula with the R and the C. So what value are we using on the tone? Well, let's say, for instance, we're using uh, five hundred k tone pot, and now we have a point four seven microfarad capacitor in use as well. One point of correction: these should have a zero in front of them. My bad. So anyway, according to this formula, if we put in our 500K pot and our 0.047 uh, microfarad capacitor, we have a cutoff frequency of about 7 hertz. That's so low, it's not even going to sound like anything. You know, it's just going to be clicking 7 times a second. That's about what you're going to hear. Not going to be worth it. What if we put in a 250K pot instead? 
Well, with the 250K pot, we're going to get about 14 hertz. So what about a 250K pot with a 0.022 microfarad capacitor? Well, in this formula, now we're ending up with a cutoff frequency of 30 hertz. That's still pretty low, but you're going to be able to hear it. So that's kind of how you're going to calculate that volume there. And 250 is the bottom. I mean, you know, if, if we uh, turn that knob in the other direction and we turn it all the way down to, say, 1K, well, then we're going to get a cutoff frequency of like 7200 hertz, which is very high. But you can see how all that fits together, right? So let's remember one last thing here. This capacitor, the tone capacitor, is the path to ground for your signal. You don't hear what comes through this. You only hear what doesn't. So this is what you're filtering out. And guys, I hope that gives you a better or a basic understanding kind of, of how the circuitry of a passive tone control works. It's not very difficult, and honestly, there's no right or wrong answer. You just have, I mean, obviously there's an electrically right or wrong answer if it doesn't make any sound. But tone-wise, you just play around with those values until you get something that you like. It's all subjective. But you know it's not subjective? Getting good connections between your wires and their termination points. And for that, you can use something like our sponsor today, Solder Stick. Today's video is brought to you by Solder Stick. Solder Stick makes quick, waterproof wire connections that last a long time and protect whatever it is you're working on. They sell different types of connectors, everything from T-tap connectors, which allow you to put a splice into the middle of a wire without having to cut the wire or remove any insulation. Waterproof uh, melt butt connector kits. Spade connector kits, which if you work on cars or boats, you know how useful they will be. And the same goes for ring connectors. When you need to connect a wire to something with a nut and a bolt, this is simply the way to do it solder stick remember them for all of your wire connection needs there's a link down below for a discount